One of the things I discovered is that there were a lot of good cops, people who were trying to do good in this era. I, one of the first things that my boss taught me when I came to America, I got my first job in the early 70s, was this American idea of good cops and bad cops. We were going to a meeting and he said, I'll be good cop, you'll be bad cop. So I said, Gene, what does that mean? He says, well, I'm the boss, I have to uh, run out, all these guys who like me, we all have, have, you know, you have to, in other words, point out all those things about them. You know, in other words, I have to do all the dirty work of criticizing them and uh, telling them why they're behind schedule, they're over budget, and he has to sit back and say, oh, I've looked at this side, and I've looked at that side, and these are the good cop, you know? He's trying to help everybody. So I kind of learned how to play bad cop in the American sense. <laughs> then, in another career, uh, we were sending delegations to Japan. I was leading delegations to Japan on behalf of ITT and China, and I was a good cop. So then I was told, corporate law, the legal department will be the bad cops. You are the good cop. In other words, ultimately after we've done a joint venture, I have to be living with them and working with them. So we have to have good relations. And so we bring them to New York and wine and dine them and take them to Broadway. They take us to Tokyo, they wine and dine us. So we have to have really good friendships. So I'm a good cop doing that. But we need very good, solid contract and we need to really squeeze them and get the best out of them. That's the corporate lawyer's job. Because the deal is done, the lawyer gets out of the picture. We are the ones who are marrying them as marketing people and business people. So we have to be the good cops. So this idea of good cop, bad cop is a very common phrase in American culture. Now, in the Native American days, it was a very common ploy. It starts there. It was a very common ploy for uh, an American to go out and fall in love, the romantic idea of Native Americans, they have great culture, and championing them, and campfires, and you know this uh, uh, John Wayne type character, frontier man who's out there living like the Indians, living with them, and so on. So often, the good cop would champion the rights of the Native Americans and argue against Andrew Jackson and other presidents who want to displace the Native Americans and take their land, actually champion on behalf of the uh, Native Americans. And the Native Americans will begin to trust this guy, that he is there for us. We don't need to go represent ourselves because, you know, he's there speaking for us in the Senate and so on. And the good cop would do his best to champion for these Native Americans against all the bad cops, yeah? But eventually, either they were together, the good cop, bad cop, really on the same side. It's just a game. Or the good cops meant well. They were honest people who meant well, but they would lose out. They would just eventually lose out. Yeah? So I took this corporate experience of good cop, bad cop, and then also there's a book I'm doing on American civil, uh, history of America from 1600 onward, where I'm profiling all good cop, bad cop as a way of framing historical events in dealing with other people. So I applied it to this era. There are a lot of good cops in this era. There is a, there's a, there is a theology called Fulfillment theology. Fulfillment theology says, I love Hinduism. I love Vedas. I love it, but it is superseded by Christianity. So it's like saying you're in the kindergarten and you'll go up to a point, but you cannot go to the ultimate. You have to come to Christ for the ultimate. <laughs> There's also something called inculturation, which has been practiced since the early Robert De Nobili and these kind of people came. Inculturation is like you have these computers which says uh, Pentium inside. You know, the Pentium is kind of hidden inside, but it's there. So this is called Bible inside. But outside, it, the church will be called ashram. They will be having uh, puja to Jesus Devta. And the priest will be wearing saffron. And this is all over South India. It's one of the, it's very pervasive in South India. Huge pervasive in South India. And so this is called inculturation. The Vatican has argued for, against, a lot of both sides are being argued, arguing, those who want it, those who don't want it, but it is allowed. In other words, they keep saying, well, it's not the real thing, and those who want, those Christians who want to do it, saying, yeah, but it's a good way to get in the door. You get in the door, and you kind of fuse them and get them in on your side, and then later on you can throw out the Hindu idols and deities and bring them to the true God. But in the beginning you have a kind of a mixture. And so a lot of our yoga teachers in this country have actually encouraged inculturation. They've sort of slipped into that and facilitated that unknowingly. Yeah? So there's, those are good cops. And there is a whole movement called Christian Yoga. Uh, my book has whole chapters on Christian Yoga. 
Jewish yoga, Yahweh yoga, Kabbalah yoga, all kinds of yoga, where these are people who after having studied Indian system, some of them for 10, 20, 30 years, some of them are teachers, and they have now decided that we have to reject that and find the same thing in our own culture, in our own language, and supply it to our people in our way, and they say that these are yucky, yucky idols, and these are heathen idols, and these are creepy mantras. These are some of the phrases in their advertising. That we protect you, we give you the benefits of yoga and meditation, without the evil that may creep in if you don't get it through the Christian way. Then there is something called interfaith dialogue. I've had a lot of experience going to faith dialogue and saying, they always like to say, we offer, we like tolerance. You heard the word tolerance? Religious tolerance. Try the following experiment. When somebody says religious tolerance, say, well, why not say mutual respect? Now, they won't agree to that. You, you probably don't think that that will happen, but try it, it will happen. Because tolerance, I can tolerate somebody who is no good, who is useless, but it's a patronizing attitude. I can tolerate you. I think you're bogus, I don't believe in any of your stuff, it's all a bunch of baloney, but I tolerate you. It's, it's like I'm very nice to you. But mutual respect means your path is legitimate. I can't say that because I, mean, I have a commandment that, I, that false gods I can't allow. Because the moment he says, Mutual respect is acceptable. I'll say, okay, my murtis have to be acceptable because that's who I am. A female goddess has to be acceptable. Okay? Idea of reincarnation has to be acceptable because if you really believe in mutual respect, then you have to respect me for who I am, not who you would like me to be. Yeah? And I don't have to be like you to be respected. I am who I am is who I am. You have to respect me for that. So mutual respect is not available from, from most of the traditions, from most of the Abrahamic traditions. And I've learned this in many events I've gone where I'm the official Hindu speaker and whenever they draft a resolution and whenever I see the word tolerance, I put my hand up and say, could we change it to mutual respect? And that starts a huge conversation. And I really have fun with that. Because I was the Hindu speaker in Canada, in Ottawa. They were doing the Holocaust Memorial Celebration. The Prime Minister was there. Hundreds of people were there. And I stood up and I talked and they had a resolution for mutual, for uh, tolerance that all of us will sign. So I stood up and gave a whole talk that we should not be tolerance but mutual respect, give them the reason why it's different. There was a lot of college students and uh, school students, they really applauded. They had a good time, they understood the point I was making. But my hosts and some of the people representing various religions were kind of sitting there and saying, you know, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> but, so that's a good cop, it's a, the good cop posture offering you tolerance, you have to say, is not good enough. Okay, just one more. And then the whole idea of human rights of Dalits and minorities, and that has to be done by attacking Hinduism, is also kind of a good cop strategy. I'll stop now because we won't have time, but thank you very much.